Greetings boys and girls from Omo Custom Painting. Um, it's time for another Q&A. Um, been a while since we did one and uh, we've had some questions that popped up and we want to take care of said questions and um, help people out a little bit. What are you doing? Huh? Alright, daddy's busy. Alright, first question was asked, oh man, how many coats of paint do I put on uh, my models? Okay, it's not three coats of paint and two coats of clear. Okay, um, when you apply paint the way that I do, it's a multitude of light mist coats. Um, the fact that I use enamel cut with lacquer thinner um, allows me to just go back and forth, back and forth across the whole nine yards. I might have 10, 12 light mist coats of paint on it. And when it flashes and dries, it pulls tight. I don't lose any detail. Um, you want to be able to leave yourself enough of a body, for lack of a better term, of paint that you can work with when it comes to polishing out. Now I guarantee if you lay three coats of paint on say um, eh, one of the uh, 62 Bel Airs, you're going to burn through, guaranteed. So you want to try to avoid that. Like I said, multitude of light mist coats until you've achieved an overall smoothness and gloss. And that gives you a good base to work with. If you do burn through, you just lightly sand it, a couple light mist coats, cover it up. And that's the best way to do it. Like I said, three coats of paint and two paints, two coats of clear over top of that. It's a recipe for disaster. Once again, my opinion, but just look around. Um, you know, my method seems to work and cover my behind. And I do burn through on occasion too because you catch a sharp edge that you didn't see. Um, especially on one of the fin cars, it can happen. Like I said, it's no, uh, it's no disaster. You just slightly wet sand it and a couple light mist coats and you're back in the game. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, this is for Ed. Um, and he was very polite about it. He brought this up. He said, you know, he said, I really enjoy watching your DVDs. He said, but, um, you know, I think you ought to start using pop-ups instead of hawking your DVDs. In other words, mentioning my DVDs in every segment. Um, pop-ups don't work. They do, but they don't. Um, much better if I hold it up. Now, case in point, when you brought that to my attention, Ed, that week we had mentioned the Ultimate Finish DVD set. And that segment we sold 16 in one day. And that's what we're shooting for. It's not about the money. It's about getting the education out there for people to use. And we have found that the pop-ups, especially with the older generation, pop-ups are like, what the hell was that? Zing, gone. Now, if I hold the DVDs up in here, now they get something to look at. Now, oh, ooh, it works better for us. Sorry about that, but once again, we go back to the basic as it's my channel and this is the way we're going to do things. It is a business and we want to keep it viable. And I appreciate your honesty and I do appreciate you being a gentleman about it. Thank you very much. Okay, Dana brought up a build sequence. He struggles with it. How do you do it, old man? Okay, what do you like best about the build? Do you like building the motor? Do you like building the frame, the interior? And also, this individual had brought up the fact of the harassment, and Dana, gotta let it go, brother. Um, just stick with what you enjoy doing. Um, start with, if interiors are your thing, start with your interior. Go, you know, paint it all up, bare metal foil it, detail it all up, and it just goes in steps. And you don't have to work on just one car all the time. You can have two or three and going at the same time. Build three interiors. Get yourself into a comfort zone. Same way with doing a frame or the body. I always do my bodies first. 
My bodies are completely done. And while it's flashing out after I painted it, that's when I paint all the parts. And then I'll go back to the body. Wet sand it, clear it, get everything the way I want it, bare metal foil it, the body can sit. And then I just work on the rest of the build. Hope that helps, buddy. But like I said, the idea of it is, is to do what you enjoy doing and go from there. Okay, next up. Oh, I had an individual take me to the woodshed because he thought that I was going beyond fundamentals because he wanted me to stick with the premise of uh, should I put glue on painted parts and glue the painted parts together? Uh, what do I do? These guys are arguing about this all the time. <laughs> no. Um, case in point that he brought up, he thought that I had gone beyond the fundamental aspect because I brought up about shows and I also brought up about detail parts. Now that's all well and good if you don't use them. It's okay. However, we had over 8,000 views on that show issue. And that leads me to believe whether people, this was for the people that are getting ready to go into the show world or they're curious about it. So it's fundamental. We set it up so that, you know, what tools to take, what to expect, et cetera, et cetera. You watch the video, you know what I did. Now as for basic detail parts, well, that's a fundamental too. I was asked what I used. What do I use most? And I answered the question. So, like I said, I will go back to the premise. This is my channel, and this is the way we're going to handle things. And this guy had a, bit, a little bit of an attitude about it, but there's other channels to go watch. And that's the way we look at it. Enough said. Okay. Questions popping up left, right, front, and center. DVDs, why DVDs and not digital? Um, DVDs right now serve our purpose. Um, I realize, of course, that it is the digital age. Uh, a lot of our guys coming in still have DVD players. All right, so someone asked me about, oh man, you ever use an ultrasonic cleaner for your airbrush? I have not. Um, I have several of my friends that do use them. Um, I guess this goes back to, once again, you know, old school uh, approach to it. I, uh, I'd rather clean them myself. I'm not saying yay or nay. I have no, I have no, <laughs> I have no cards in this game. Uh, and also the next question about the Tamai enamel line that's come out. Um, I have no idea uh, as of yet. Uh, we do have um, some uh, of the new paints that are going to be coming in that we're going to test drive as we've done in the past. Um, the Tamiya Lacquer. Um, I'm going to have to uh, hit up Hobby Link and, uh, and pick up some of these new, um, these new products and we'll test drive them and we'll see how, uh, how we go with it. Going back to the Sonic Cleaner, um, I have no idea. Uh, my buddies seem to like them. I'd rather just clean them by hand and uh, be done with it because that's just me. I have more control and I guess it's a lack of uh, dependent on a machine to do it. I can easily do myself. And if you look around, I don't know much more room on the, sh on the uh, shelves or the countertops for too much of anything else. Okay. Flash out time. Oh man, what do you mean by flash out time? Flash out time is after you have airbrushed your body, how long it takes before the body is completely dry. Uh, case in point, um, if you shoot a body right now with one of the testers enamel cans, you're looking at maybe two, three weeks without the use of a dehydrator. Tamaya, a couple hours. Um, if you go about the way that I go about it with the um, enamel cut with the lacquer thinner, um, depending on temperature and humidity, um, you could be, you could take the body off the nipple within 45 minutes to an hour, put it in the dehydrator, it's dried in 24 hours. Um, flash out means when the body is dried out completely. It's the best way I can describe it. 
Okay. What the? What did I do? Oh yeah. And this is I owe all of you an apology. Someone brought up about scalpel blades, which is what I use for my bare metal foil to cut my bare metal foil with. And this individual brought this up, and shame on me for not bringing it to the forefront. Do not, do not attempt to use one of those scalpel blades to cut your parts off with if you're going to apply any pressure to it whatsoever. Now, on some of my chrome work, I will go in against, if it's a chrome piece, I will go against the, the um, yeah, the porch tree itself, and I will work it very slowly, just a tiny bit of pressure. But these blades snap really easy, and you don't know what direction they're going in. And we don't want this. Kabish. So stick with the number 11s to do the, the standard number 11 blade for removal of your parts from your, your trees. And um, use the scalpel blades for bare metal foil or just lightly scribing back on parts that you're going to cut off because I don't want any accidents occurring. Uh, this young man was complaining about the lack of metalizer. Metalizer is done from testers and they no longer produce it. However, if you are looking for aluminum, steel, etc., go to MCW Finishes. Michael now has it in enamel. We did test drive it here in the shop. I was very pleased with it. Um, the drying time is not the same as what the metalizer itself was because that was dried in like 30 seconds. This is dried probably in 5 to 10 minutes. You've got to be a little bit more patient with it. But like I said, it's an excellent product, works quite well, and it's a good replacement for what we lost when testers cut out the line. Okay, uh, someone brought up about just when we did that decanting episode a couple weeks ago, just use your airbrush jar. You get, it comes back out of the jar. That's why I suggested using a tall glass jar or one of the metal containers off of one of the larger touch-up guns. Um, if you try to do this, it's going to come over, it's going to get on your hands. Um, you know, you're holding this, the thing's wet with paint, uh, it slips out of your hand, off your glove, you know. Anything that we put up here is because I've, I've experimented with it. I'm not going to put anything out there that hasn't been tried and true numerous times. Um, you do what you want to do. This individual was like, that's his way of doing it, that's okay. And when he asked me why, well, I just gave you the answer. It's much easier, it's much cleaner, and less chance of mishap. I try to do my best to keep Murphy out of this damn shop as much as I possibly can. Do I succeed? Uh, the positivity co column is much larger, but he will stick his nose in every once in a while. Uh, what type of super glue do I use? Bob Smith Industries. This is available at pretty much any well-stocked hobby shop. Um, I use the medium viscosity for my builds. Uh, Michael DeSorbo was kind enough to send me some of the canopy uh, glue. It uh, comes in a gold bottle with a black top on it. Uh, I used it and it's excellent for installing clear parts. It dries clear no problems and it's got the the tensile strength that you're looking for now now here we go uh, and this is a good question old oh, man when I when you do your sanding do you do your sanding straight line or do you do your sanding in a circular motion always in a straight line especially if you're wet sanding your body and prepping it for clear and or if you're doing your clear for 
final polish up. The reason being is you can burn through. You might not see it, you might go through, and I'll use this, 10 coats, 10 light mist coats, okay? You wet sand the body, you take it down to seven, okay? Now, if you go in circular motion, you might take this portion of the roof over here down to five while the rest of it is at a seven. Okay, so you've taken seven coats off and you stayed here for a little bit longer, you're gonna get a light spot or a dark spot. And as soon as you hit, you'll, you won't see it until you hit it with the clear. And that's why I always preach straight line. I do this on my one-to-ones and that way I don't have swirl marks when uh, when I have when after I've removed the wax it's always straight line it works out great okay listen I think I've covered pretty much everything that anybody and everybody has asked for like the last two three weeks so we're gonna continue with this it'll pop up every once in a while I apologize if I miss a one or two here or there um, I do try to get back to it and cover it sometimes I drop the ball because I'll be looking through and I might miss and I apologize for that but we're doing the best that we can do remember something this is a two-man show and usually in the shop it's a one guy show and that guy that's behind the camera he's got enough on his plate without babysitting me and going back through and catching my uh, my uh, drop balls for lack of a better term so until the next time this is the Q&A segment from Lone Wolf Custom Painting from the old man and from Jake, God bless y'all. You have a great week, and we will catch you on the fly. Take care.